Okay, so let's move on to well the the topic that's probably going to be dominating the news over the the next few months, which is the the same sex marriage uh, plebiscite. We talked a bit about it last week, but the the campaign is fully underway now. It's interesting to note that there's been a massive spike in electoral enro enrollments. Um, it's, some commentators seem to think this will benefit the yes side because they're mainly young people who normally uh, wouldn't uh, bother to, to vote. Uh, the campaigns on, on both sides have begun. Well, the, I watch a lot of Sky News and the, the marriage equality advocates, their ads are almost on an endless loop. But I noticed that the uh, traditional marriage side, they launched their official campaign site, Coalition for, uh, for Marriage. Uh, now, it's the, the thing that's really like, uh, irritating me about this debate is that I think both sides are being, you know, immature. They're both accusing the other side of engaging in hate speech and trying to like be a victim. Like, obviously, the same-sex marriage advocates, you know, s say that you know there's uh, pe people are being homophobic towards them. You know, uh, you know. Uh, comparing them with nasty people while the um, traditional America advocates are, you know, saying, well, you know, we're being called, you know, bigots because, you know, we just don't want to redefine marriage. And it, and it's just, it, it seems like really immature for me. So I, you know, criticise, you know, both sides with this. I think that the um, people who are supporting traditional marriage uh, do have a point because the left-wing bullying that happens to these people and intimidation. I saw you cover it, Tim, I believe, uh, a Liberal Party meeting that uh, Margaret Court was coming to. Um, left-wing protesters, left-wing agitators outside, bullying and intimidating people. Um, so they do have some validity to what they are saying there, but, but the whole victimhood card I don't agree with, saying, oh, whatever, whatever, but actual intimidation uh, from left-wing processes is inexcusable. Um, and But equally, what's equally ridiculous is the fact that Bill Shorten says that the, the gay community uh, suicide rates will spike. And I think that is inherently bigoted as well. It's almost saying that a gay person can't deal with merit debate, um, isn't up to the rigors that you know any other person is. And I think that that's wrong, bigoted, and it's almost homophobic in its own in its own way. Uh, and then he's also a hypocrite for blocking the same-sex marriage plebiscite in the Senate, and then apparently being the biggest proponent of it. So I think there's hypocrisy on both sides of the spectrum. Yeah, yeah I definitely. Like, I just want to, you know, be able to, you know, de debate the issue of, you know, whether we should legalize same-sex marriage with, you know, without without both sides, you know, to use the expression being triggered, like the. The, the pro same sex marriage side, there's this Twitter hashtag called, you know, respectful debate, uh, where they list like, you know, look at all this, you know, mean, mean stuff that, that people are, are saying about us. And, and it's, and it's also made up of like, you know, basically just, you know, people just, um, you know, basically making like, you know, gay jokes, like they're, they're highlighting that, like, you know, this is, you know, so offensive. And it's like, well, you know, like people have made like gay jokes forever. Like, I don't think because there's a plebiscite, you know, you need to like, you know, give it more prominence than it is. I mean, it, it, you know, just, you know, highlighting, you know, every like fa uh, Facebook comments that's critical is, is just like over the top. Well, we, we're entitled to freedom of speech, whether we actually have a constitutional protection for it or not. I think that it's an innate human right um, and that people will ostracise themselves if they make outlandish claims. Um, but I still think that highlighting, you know, two or three examples of maybe a homophobic comment on Twitter is cherry picking uh, to an extreme level uh, and, it, and it isn't really it isn't really getting us anywhere, though. Yeah, like, what i you know, like to see is, like, if, um, you know, if a person on the traditional marriage side, you know, um, you know, make, make the case why, you know, I, I think that, you know, marriage should remain because, you know, a child needs a mother and a father. I'd like to make them see, you know, that case. And then the pro-same-sex marriage people can say, you know, I disagree with that and here's my evidence. And we can, 
uh, and, and we can have this debate uh, bait with, you know, just using facts and figures, you know, rationally, rather than, you know, breaking into hysterics. Like, I want to see, you know, the facts and figures put forward so people can make up their minds. And I read this in the Australian. Maybe, this was a comment of one of the writers, maybe the left is trying to stop this because maybe these um, 64 same-sex marriage, 40 against, aren't accurate. Maybe it's more of a, a 45, you know, 55, or maybe it's a 51, 49, and it's quite a lot closer. Uh, that was an interesting point. And I think you, you uh, were talking earlier and you said the betting market for this is actually tight. So it's always a good indication where people put in their money uh, to what's actually happening. But I think that the left is trying to stop debate on this issue and they want a parliamentary vote. And I think they're trying to make this a big, uh, Labor's trying to make this a big election, um, election pledge next election. But ironically, they stopped it in the Senate. Oh, well, Labor have said that regardless of the result, even if it comes back, no, they're just going to ignore that and legislate same-sex marriage anyway if they win the next election. Well, um, it's interesting because I was reading that there are um, socially, there's social, there's social conservatives within the Labor Party as well, and to assume that um, every Labor MP will vote for same-sex marriage, I think, is a bit silly, and to assume that every uh, Liberal MP will vote against it, silly, if there is a conscious vote, I think that it will be quite close. Um, if it were to go to a vote, we should wind at this stage, we, we're definitely looking like we'll get a, a, a postal survey. Uh, but that's non-binding as well, which further adds to the mystery and confusion uh, in this long, arduous debate. Oh, well, Labor uh, says they're, they're going to be moving to a binding vote in 2019, which even, you know, these uh, social conservatives in the, the Labor Party, they'll be first to, uh, forced to vote for it as well. That's why... Um, uh, uh, former Labor Senator Joe Bullock resigned because he said, you know, I can't be a Labor Senator and uh, eventually be forced to vote for same-sex marriage. And I think that that, in a sense, is very honourable. Um, and I think that that's very good. Uh, there was a legislative, a member of the Legislative Assembly in New South Wales, I think it's Peter Phelps might be his name, um, he resigned because he uh, didn't, I, I believe he didn't want to, um, he, he, he thought issuing, a, I think it was some kind of tax or forcing people to use E10 or something like that on petrol was an illiberal principle and he resigned from the party. So I think that people resigning on principle is a good thing and it's inherently undemocratic this binding vote saying that no, none of the backbenchers can have a free and open opinion. They have to go tunnel vision. Um, with our mission. I think that that's not very good or healthy for democracy. Well, I know that uh, one socially conservative Labor Senator, Don Farrell, he said uh, when, once it does um, uh, become binding, you know, I'll vote for it even though it's against my conscience. So he's going in the opposite direction. Well, sort of these politicians are careerists, so yeah. whatever they can do to hold their seat, I guess.